Lanigan on your left, who is playing Red White Eldrazi. We saw this actually last round. Did not perform particularly well there, but we'll see if it performs pretty well here. And this is a matchup that I'm sure Todd is prepared to play against. The Red White Eldrazi deck is basically just a morph of the mono red Eldrazi deck that we saw become very popular at the end of last season. Yep. Kind of a free splash, really, if you think about it. It, it is a free splash, and, and I, everyone expects it to be a big deck still in the format. So I'm sure Todd has played against it a lot and is ready to compete. It's a JSON turn at number two for Mr. Anderson. Lanigan with a Needle Spires, a Westville Abbey, and now there's a Declaration of Stone. So Anderson will get a clue. And remember that that does exile, so that's one less card in the graveyard for Jace. The next Jace, not going to be too close. Yeah. There's the clue for Anderson. Picked up a copy of Shivan Reef for the turn. He'll play that along with another Jace and pass the turn back. We'll see if Lanigan has another answer. If the first Jace doesn't work out, might as well just have another Jace, right? Absolutely. There's a waste. Well, that's an interesting do. choice. I was a little bit surprised to see that myself. Uh, checking, he just has one. And now a Vile Aggregate. I'm curious. I'm trying to think if there's like a benefit to playing one waste. I guess he does have four evolving wilds. Evolving wilds. Okay. That's that's it right there. A Jace activation. Hey, fiery temper. Well, it doesn't kill vile aggregate. Todd opting and to go with the old fiery temper artwork, by the way. And third Jace. Yeah. And now thing in the ice. It'll start with four counters and a passing a turn. Now, I think most people are familiar with this, but if you are not, two mana, 0-4 Defender. Thing Ice enters the battlefield with four ice counters on it. That's what the die represents. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, remove an ice counter from Thing in the Ice. Then, if it has no ice counters, transform it. We'll get to the transformation part in a little bit. But for now, Mike Lanigan is going to play an Eldrazi Displacer and pass the turn back. Todd has an answer ready with that with the Fiery Temper. Oh, yeah. And we see some of the synergies in Todd's deck right away. Thing in the Ice and Jace line up to be pretty good buddies. Yep. Both of these want you to cast a lot of spells. And once Jace is flipped, it's going to stay on the board when Thing in the Ice does its thing. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that you see what good. I did there? I yeah? did. That was good. Stayed up all night thinking <laughs> of that one. <laughs> well, I kept you up all night, so that's, that's my own fault. Here's a Fiery Temper. It's going to take care of the Displacer. Thing in the Ice is going to fall down to three counters. Now, that's the new art. Do we have the old art for you Torment fans out there? I actually don't know which art I like better. I think they're both pretty good. They're, they're great art. That's That was pretty good. That is pretty good. And, and, you know, you get to show off a little bit, like, with your, your, your throwback to the past. Yeah. You know, most people probably weren't even playing in Torment. Yeah, most people don't know about that set. I was around. I was really bad then, but I was around. A Drownyard Temple, don't. I know you want to make a joke, don't. Drownyard Temple was the land. No, I'm just thinking about the arc of your career. You were really bad then. Yeah. And then at some point you were... Medium. Medium. At best. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and now back to bad. A, a solid mediocre. Yeah, and now back to bad. Okay. With the headset on. Here's a thought, not seer. So you really peaked at medium at <laughs> yes, some point. Yes. yes. Okay. Or as Todd would like to say, medium minus. Here's, <laughs> here's a lightning axe in Todd's hand, among other options for Mike Lanigan. He's going to write this information down. And Thought Knots here is going to exile one of these cards. But uh, you can tell just... So when we watch Todd play, right, we've watched him play Jeskai Black so much over the past, geez, six, seven months in standard. And that Jace would have flipped by now. Yes. But now, because of the lack of fetch lands, and those Jeskai Black decks were built around fetch land plus battle land, this card flips a lot slower. He's only got two cards in the graveyard, and he's, it feels like he's got a long way to go. Yep. Now, the hand here for Todd, you can see a little bit better now. The Goggles, the Kozilek's Return. He's also got Fall of the Titan and a Lightning Axe. Now, I think what Lanigan's asking here is how does Fall of the Titan work? Because Todd's got some alternate language cards. When you're friends with Jerry Thompson, Jerry Thompson loves a non-English card. So Fall of the Titan is the card that we're going to take a look at here because I think that might be the best of the bunch. Uh, XXR, R being red, of course. Surge, X and a red. Fall of the Titan deals X damage to each of up to two target creatures and or players. If you're surging this thing, this thing is awesome. Now Anderson's going to crack that clue to draw a card. Can't forget that that happened a few turns ago. Now he's going to untap, and he'll hey, be drawing. We, we saw Todd, he, he had the opportunity to use the Lightning Axe there to get rid of the Thought Knots here with the trigger on the board, but he wanted to go ahead and just bolster his hand a little bit. Um, cracking the clue, he, he needs to hit that land drop, so he, he got a little bit fortunate. He did draw the land. Now he's able to get the goggles on the board, and this might be the situation he's looking for. Now, this is the part I was a little bit surprised about because 
And Lanigan did not take the goggles with the Thought Knots here, so this is going to enter the battlefield. Legendary Artifact, that's one thing to note. We'll get to that in just a moment. But add red to your mana pool. When that mana is spent to cast a red instant or sorcery spell, you get to copy that, and you may choose new targets. Now, Legendary Artifact is important here, Craig, because realistically, you can't play four of this card. No, I mean, no one walks around with multiple pairs of goggles on at the same time. <laughs> Never seen that before. Eh, that, that, that's do. just a flavor thing. <laughs> Well, here's the Reality Smasher, and here's some attacking. So Todd's actually going to take a healthy amount of damage, but that's not lethal. So now the big question is, what's Todd's turn going to look like after he gets untapped? Because now he should get to do his thing, whatever his thing is. Yeah, Todd either, either needs a board sweeper here, a big X spell to get one or two or three of these creatures off the board, or he needs to cast enough spells to flip the thing in the ice. Well, any X isn't a bad place to start. Now he's going to count his mana. Keep in mind, he does get to have a Jace activation here, and thing the ice could transform pretty soon here. Lightning Axe was a great draw step for him there. Yeah. So now he gets to decide, does he want to double up on the Lightning Axe through the goggles, or does he want to cast the Lightning Axe and then double up on one of the other spells through the goggles? That's funny. We watch, we watch Todd play quite a bit, and one of the things that he's known for is playing very fast. Yes. Because he's played so much with the decks that he's played that the decision making is pretty easy. You know, I drew Lightning X, okay, kill this, kill this, discard that, maybe the Reality Smasher's trigger, um, activate Jace, flip it, move, move on with my turn. But we're in a brand new format. Yep. So the decision making process is actually going to take him and everybody else a lot longer because he's got quite a few options on this turn. And th this deck potentially turns the corner a lot faster than the other decks that he was playing. It's very true. Um, once the thing in the ice flips, you're attacking your opponent with a 7-8, yep. the game ends fast. You know, once you start doubling up your X spells with the goggles, the game can end pretty fast. He was thinking about starting with another copy of Thing of the Ice. Now he's not going to. So now he's just going to start with a Lightning Axe, I believe. And he's going to do it without the goggles. So he's just going to go after Reality Smasher. And he has to discard two cards. Mm -hmm. One for the Lightning Axe cost, one for the Reality Smasher, trigger. But now he can surge Fall the Titan. And he can cast it through the goggles. So now a bunch of damage is going to be dealt. We'll get exact confirmation on what X is going to be and where all these targets are going. This it, is pretty insane. It, it looks like X was four. Okay. And it forks. So it happens twice. It happens twice, but then through the goggles, it's going to happen twice again. So one of the times he's going to kill the Thought Knots here and put four damage on the Vile Aggregate. The Vile Aggregate. Okay. And then the other, he's going to finish off the Vile Aggregate and have four damage end up on Mike's face. And he gets to draw a card because the Thought Knots here died. And then he draws a card because the Thought Knots here died. So this was a big swing. <laughs> to, to say the least. A average turn. <laughs> Now Todd's going to draw on discard. He's going to discard the blue-red dual land. And now Jace is going to transform. And now he's got his whole graveyard at his disposal. The thing in the ice is one counter away from flipping. Uh, this is where he wants to be. He's still at a very healthy 11 life total. Now, for those of you wondering, home, it's a Highland Lake is named the blue-red duel from Shadows Over Innistrad. Don't want to say blue-red dual land because there's also the creature land that's out there in Wandering Fumeral and their Shivan Reef. Yep. So blue-red's actually got pretty good mana, just like black-white did last no, round. No, all of the enemy colors have really great mana yep. right now. Even the ally colors line up very well to have good mana, but all of the two color decks right now. So one of the things that always happens to me release weekend, you know, yeah, you, you, you browse the cards, you want to know the name of the cards and all the things they do so we can bring you good coverage at home, but you don't really know all the interactions. Yep. So right now I just see Jay's flip and I'm thinking, okay, Todd can recast a spell through the goggles. I don't know if this is the case. Is that not, can that not work? I don't know. Now, here's a Chandra, which is actually pretty good. All right, the Chandra was what he needed here. It's a pretty important play. Now, now he has the option of going after Jace, which is the play I think he's going to make, but he can't finish the Jace off. Thing in the Ice is still sitting around to play some defense. Um, once Thing in the Ice flips, it comes back after Chandra to finish it off. Mm -hmm. So e even though this was probably one of his best plays, it still doesn't get him anywhere. Yeah, and if this is his best play, like the best draw or best card he has available in his deck, that means he's in some serious trouble. Well, and it shows how far ahead Todd is. When, when your opponent's best play, which is Chandra, very, very powerful, doesn't do a whole lot. Okay, Chandra's just going to minus to take care of thing in the ice. Okay. Which is fine. Now, Tormenting Voice was the draw. Hello. Mr. Anderson wants some cards, and I can't blame him. So now, he discards a card, peel four. Yep. 
anticipate an island, a mountain, and a wandering fumarole. Just one copy of Anticipate in Todd's deck. Yeah, we would need to look at the goggles again to see the wording on it. Yeah, I think it just says, it just forks a spell. So if you if you recast if you recast a card from Jace through that, you just get two of it. And we see Todd play a little bit careful here. He could have activated his fumarole, but he leaves it back on defense. He's so far ahead that he's going to be able to win this game. Yeah, I don't think there's any any need to really start getting aggressive and try to turn the corner, as they say. I think he's still not in the best of situations. I think he's in a good spot, but there's that needle spires hanging out. Well, and, or, or another Chandra could come down. Yeah, you know, it's better to have the fumarole on defense here. Also, I have a feeling he wants to cast and anticipate, get a little more help. Because even though he drew four cards, if you're Mike, you're probably thinking, eh, boy, I'm in some serious trouble. But realistically, Todd's hand not that great right now. Yes. But he does have access to that whole graveyard with the Jace on the board. Yep. Two Hedron Crawlers. How about one Hedron Crawler? No, I would like to cast these both right. at the same time. Two Hedron Crawlers, it is correct. Now here's an Anticipate for Anderson. Take a look at the top. A couple of cards here. A Mountain, a Tormenting Voice, and a Magmatic Insight. Anderson with just two lands in his hand, an Island, and a Wandering Fumarol. So I think, I think he took the Magmatic Insight. Yes, yes he th did. The same as the Tormenting Voice, minus one mana. And he's drawn another copy of Mag Magmatic Insight. So here's one. Discard an Island. Peel four. So a Jace, a Shivan Reef, a Chandra of his own, and another copy of Thing in the Ice. Yeah, we saw Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time ro rotate out of the format, <laughs> yep. but Todd has figured out another way to <laughs> draw an unfair number of cards for n basically no mana. Got to build your own Treasure Cruise. Yeah. Here. Now Todd got to do even a little bit more math to see how broken his turn can be. One of the cards that is kind of innocuous at this point, but I think could play a really big role in Todd's deck this week in his Drown Yard Temple. Such yeah. a great discard to Jace. It is... A madness card to me okay. that you don't have to pay the cost on right away. Okay, that's an interesting way to look at it. Never considered that. I, but that makes sense because you don't have to. And it's another card, again, that you can discard to Jace, you can discard to Magmatic Insight, all the other things that you mentioned. So that's actually pretty nice is now here's Fall of the Titan being surged. I, I think, the, well, it's tough to say what maybe the best card in his deck is because we're just watching the first game, but Fall of the Titan looks unreal in this deck. It's so easy to surge and he's got so much mana to work with. Now here's another copy of Jace, Wandering Fumarol. He's used all of his mana. Still has cards in his hand. Still has the graveyard available next turn. Yeah, this is like turn nine. So that's a dream come true. He's really just running Lanigan out of resources here. Now, Mike, he's got to find another card like Ashanja that we saw a little earlier. But again, the, the situation here for him is what's the best draw in his deck to get him out of the spot? And I don't know if there is one. And th there's been a lot of hype around Westville Abbey coming into this event. But with the games that we've watched, things are either too out of control at the very beginning of the game, or they're too out of control towards the end of the game for the West Vale, West vale Abbey to be significant. I'm not saying it's a bad card, still a great effect, but from what we've seen, it's just not the most effective card. Yeah, through two rounds, we have seen it just kind of hanging out there. Yeah. We have not seen activations. We have certainly not seen it transform yet as here comes Needle Spires. Looks like Anderson's just going to take that hit. He's going to fall down to seven. There's another copy of Westville Abbey and a passing of the turn over to Anderson. He'll untap all those lands and the goggles, and he'll draw a card. Looks like he may have picked up another copy of goggles. And he'll start with Magmatic Insight, but he's not going to goggles it. He'll discard a Shivan Reef. Thing the ice is going to fall down to two ice counters. Insight and a Highland Lake are the draw. Well, yeah, with Fall of the Titans in his graveyard, he might have plans for that in the goggles. Mm -hmm. We see, we see a Chandra in his hand. He'll insight again. Discard Highland Lake, draw two cards. Thing of Ice is going to fall down to one ice counter. Picked up a Tormenting Voice in a Mountain. Jace is going to tick down. You mentioned Fall of the Titans. You found it. That's a land. This is a big one of those. I think uh, Mr. Anderson's going upstairs. And now Thing of the Ice is going to transform. He did six twice with Fall of the Titans for 12, and then Thing in the Ice is going to come in, crashing in here for another 7. Yeah, that's an Awoken Horror. Now, I believe that Jace is going to have to get picked up because it's not a horror, but that's the only thing. Yeah. 
as now Anderson will attack for lethal. Mike Lanigan's going to concede the game. So Todd Anderson's going to win the game number one here over Mike Lanigan. Oof. Blue red control up a game over Red White Eldrazi, and that deck looked impressive there. Well, it, yeah, it definitely fired on all cylinders. It, it didn't get out too far behind, and once the goggles are on the board, wow. Very, very powerful yeah. effect. Uh, we'll take a look at sideboards now, see if Mike can tie things up. Now, he's got three Spatial Contortions, three Angelic Purge, three Eldrazi Obligator, two Quarantine Fields, two Akum Firebird, a Nahiri, the Harbinger, and then a Thought Knots here. What do we like here, Craig? Um, I can see, it, it depends on what, what route Mike wants to take here. I can see Spatial Contortions coming in to try to help mitigate the early Jaces, and they can also finish off Thing in the Ice when it blocks. Um, Angelic Purge, just exiling things is obviously a powerful effect. The Thought Knots here is going to be good to go after Todd's hand. So these are all cards that I can see coming in. He might want to get more aggressive. The Akum Firebird at least has evasion. It can come over the top. So w we'll see which path Mike thinks he needs to take in this game. Does he need to kill the early Jaces, or does he just need to be as aggressive as possible and attack? For Anderson, four Eldrazi Obligators, four Fevered Visions. That's a new one from Shadows Over Innistrad. Three Negates, two Void Shatter, a Chandra Flamecaller, and another copy of Kozilek's Return. I expect Todd to get even more controlling than he is. Okay. A lot of these counter spells are very good against the Eldrazi deck. It, you know, their best threats cost four, five, six mana. So being able to cast Negate for two or Void Shatter for three is going to be very powerful against those decks. Yeah, those kind of mana exchanges are what you want to make. Yeah. Three mana for a five mana spell, three mana for a six mana spell, or, you know, negating a Chandra, that's two mana for six mana. So that's a that's living the dream, as they say. Yeah. And I, I don't know if this is a matchup where you want the fe Fevered Visions. Um, the Eldrazi deck can't always get a lot of cards out of its hand real fast. So... if it, Like I said, Todd's played this matchup before, so if he knows he can control the board enough, he might want to bring in the Fevered Visions as another win condition. Okay. Well, we'll see what he does as game number two will be underway here in just a moment. But in the meantime, we are talking Game Night, the very popular StarCityGames.com promotion. Oh, yeah, look at that guy. How can you not love a slopper mile driver? Now, there's not a lot of time left in April to get this thing. So go to go.starcitygames.com slash game night and find out where you can go pick up the mile driver. That's in April. For May, well, it's a Manitary Mentor, a play on... This is a very wise creature. Monastery mentor, see? It's a very smart manatee. Now, my favorite one. Now, the, I, I get to have fun because I, I work in the home office, so I know what's coming. Sure. This is one of my favorites. Old June, the otter spell, which is a play on... Lightning Bolt. Exactly. So you nailed yep. that. It's perfect. That's a different type of Lightning Bolt there, an otter spell. That one's available June. StarCityGames.com, game night. Find your local one, have some fun, play some fun and friendly magic. Go to StarCityGames.com slash game night for more information about this awesome program. A play on Lightning Bolt yeah, in Otter Spell. Because what, what else could it be? Perfect fit. Exactly. I agree. Todd Anderson, going to do a little bit of re-sideboarding here. Now, he, uh, boy, he's good at this whole magic thing. Looks like 26 SCG Tour top. Oh, I'm even closer than I thought I was. Yeah, I thought it was 28. Yeah. Sometimes I get my numbers wrong. That's actually in our favor here. Yeah. Together, we could chase him down once we take these headsets off. Six open wins, three invitational top eights with one invitational win. Has the most open series top eights of all time. Married to the wonderful Callie Anderson, who is unfortunately not here with us today on the stage, but she's probably watching Todd play right now, so hi, Callie. And then self-proclaimed best NFL Blitz player ever, which many have debated, but no one, oddly enough, has challenged him to a duel. Well, and when you're self-proclaimed, who can argue with you? That's really true. You know. I hadn't even considered that. He feels like no one can beat him. Uh, to be fair, and we've mentioned this before, when I challenge his NFL Blitz title, he starts rattling off combos and plays in the game as though it's not a button-mashing game, which is already just way ahead of most Yeah, I was about people. to say, that now you just immediately back down. Exactly, yeah. He just starts rattling off some number of combos in the deck, and he probably knows who the best players are, and, you know, I could... I have a little interest in maybe Googling NFL Blitz strategy, see what shows up. Sure. So you said, oh, Todd, we can play NFL Blitz. And he said, oh, do you, do you use this combo and do you use this player and do you use this play? And you said, all right, we cannot play NFL Blitz. Yeah, I'd actually like to keep yeah. testing the matchup that we're playing instead of the NFL Blitz yeah. matchup. Because I feel like maybe, maybe I could beat you in that one. Me, as a subpar Magic player, has a better chance <laughs> <laughs> of beating you, the self-proclaimed best NFL Blitz Magic, excuse me, NFL Blitz football player. Hopefully. I think he would get the best of us on both fronts. I have a feeling you're right. Yeah. I do. And he's also winning the hair game right now, too. He's, he's looking sharp. That's like a Mohawk-esque thing. 
esque. It's good. It's really good. I wish I could do that with my hair. Instead, I have this mess on top of my head I can't do anything with. You should be proud of that mess. There's nothing to do with it. It's horrible. The only thing I can do is just keep growing it. And then if I ever have any aspirations of growing an afro, I can't because of this job. Because then the headset just won't fit. That would be awesome if you just had the world's longest headset strap. <laughs> <laughs> the headset just starts off the screen. Just a comically big headset strap. It's just never in play if I ever want to do that again. But yeah, I, I worked for a rather unfortunate manager who is still rocking like the saddest comb over that you'll mm, ever see. That's tough. And you, you should be thankful that you've got what you've got going on. Yes, I have some hair to work with. I'd rather have Todd's hair. But then again, Todd's hair would probably look weird on me. So yeah, It could be, you know, half a dozen lonely strands with half a bottle of gel in it <laughs> just, just just smeared over the top of the rest of your bald head. Like, that's not where you want to be. Here's a Thopter engineer. It's going to bring a hasty Thopter along with it. I think we'll see Mike attack for one. And he will. Anderson with a couple of Blue Red events to start for the Chiffin Reef and a Highland Lake and the very powerful Jace Friends Prodigy. Jace is active. As we head to Todd's third turn, he'll start by activating it. And he'll draw a discard. Mountain was the draw. The discard. Aha. Oh, oh. It's free. It's so good. Now let's take a look at Drowned Temple. Drowned Yard Temple, excuse me, because in a weird way, this is actually ramping. Yes. Which is really cool. It, it's super good. This is one of the cards I tweeted about when, when the full spoiler list came out. This is one of the cards I'm most excited about. It, it's very simplistic. I think it's easy to overlook just how good a card like this is. And, and Todd has made his deck in a way to maximize it. He's got all these discard effects, the magmatic insights, the tormenting voice. There's Kozilek's return. Oh, jeez. You, you thought perhaps that he was going to bring back the temple? No, I'll just kill all your stuff instead and take one from the old Thopter Engineer. Yeah. Now Anderson will untap. Oh, hello. Jorian, Ruin Diver, perhaps? Yep, a couple of those in his list. Yeah, he's playing two of that card. And he has the ability to play multiple souls in one turn pretty easily. Oh, yeah. That's not hard at all. But Todd has to be careful here. If, if a Reality Smasher comes down next turn and a Chandra of the turn after that, he is way behind. Yeah. Now here's just Jorian. This is not one I expect to see a lot of play post rotation, so this is a welcome surprise. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, draw a card. And in certain turns, Jorian can actually count as the first spell. Yes. So you follow up, and then you'll actually be able to trigger this. Now there's a Thought Knots here. And it'll work on either player's turn. Very true. Thought Nazir is going to show two Jaces, a Goggles, and a Shivan Reef. Now, I'm curious, given the last game. I can't imagine the Goggles staying in the uh, Yeah, I think that's got to go. That, that card was so powerful last game against Mike that if I'm Mike, uh, there's a little bit of recency bias here. And I'm saying, that thing's out of here. That's got to go. You know, it was above average in game one. Yeah. So let's, let's try it this other way. Anderson's going to start with the Jace, it looks like. I'm curious if he's going to play another Jace, and he will, actually, so that he can trigger this. So he'll draw a card. You have my coast of the draw. So the one Jace basically just cycles for, yeah. for two mana. That's probably not too bad. There's a mountain and a passing of the turn. We're heading back Lanigan's way. And, and we see Mike has brought in a lot of the removal spells in his deck. Not too surprising? Not too surprising. He's, uh, it looks like he's got the Angelic Purge in his hand, and then he's got the Declaration of Stone that was in the main deck. Thought here is going to come across for four. Anderson's going to fall down to 14. Let's see what's next here for Lanigan in the second main phase. Looks like he's going to pay for a little bit of white man off the battlefield forge. Going to take care of Jace. A clue going to come here for Anderson. The follow-up is Vile Aggregate. Okay, and... It wasn't Reality Smasher in the Planeswalker, but it is a significant board presence. Fiery Temper the draw here for Anderson. He'll start by playing a Shivan Reef. And now he's got to figure out how he wants to sequence cards so he can actually get the most out of Jorian. Which is a tough spot. Um, he wants to sink some mana into his land in order to be able to block effectively next turn. Mm -hmm. Maybe he doubles it up with Fiery Temper. I don't think he has enough mana to do that right now. But he also wants to crack the clue. He needs to build up more cards in his hand. Yeah, one of the things that he actually has going on within his lands is he has a copy of Wandering Fumarole. Yes. So that can actually do a nice job of trading with the Thought Knots here, but then it also net Anderson a card, though he'll be down a land. So he's actually got quite a few options here on what he wants to do. 
On Lanigan's side, he's going to start with another Vile Aggregate. I'm curious if Mike's going to attack or not. And, and I, I can see Lanigan not being willing to cash in a Thought Knots here. I guess he's going for it. Okay. Anderson reaching for those lands very quickly. I guess he feels like he has enough board presence, enough pressure, that it's a waste not to attack. So there are the blocks. Wandering from is going to go in front of Thought Knots here. Jorian's going to go in front of Thopter Engineer. And Vile Aggregate's going to come across here for a healthy chunk of damage. Anderson's going to spin the Wandering Froom roll. He's going to use the mana from that and the mountain to crack the clue. So that'll give him a card. If he picked up a copy of Anticipate. Now he's ready for damage, and damage is going to resolve. So Wandering Froom roll. And Thought Knots here are going to trade. Vile Aggregate's going to deal some damage. And I think we'll see Anderson get a card here in just a moment. But they want to make sure they get damage resolved appropriately. And they do. And it's actually important that Mike remembers that trigger because it's his card. Correct. So now he will draw. Well, he'll mill first. Oh, because of ingest from Viagra. Yep. Got it. Okay. And now he'll draw. So they were probably just talking about how those abilities were going to stack and resolve. Yeah, Vile Aggregate is a really weird card because it has a bunch of lines of text that kind of go together, but don't. They do go together, but it's not super intuitive. And there's only 12 lines of text on it, so <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to forget about some of these abilities. So you got the Void. It's power and toughness equal to the number of colors creatures Just you control. Just power. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, power. Yep. yep. Trample and then ingest. Now, Todd's turn here, not bad. He's going to start with Thing in the Ice, then he'll hard cast a Fiery Temper, which means he'll draw a card from Jorien and then remove an Ice Counter from Thing in the Ice. Thing in the Ice down to three counters. And those Vire Aggregates currently just two power creatures. Yep. So now we head back Mike Lanigan's way. Now, you mentioned Reality Smasher a couple of times, and now here it is, and that's a big draw. Boom. Anderson 11 life. Here come the Vile Aggregates. They're three power now. And that certainly changes some things. Now, Thing in the Ice can get in front of one. Yep, that's the easy block. Now the, now the question is, do I chump block now? Can I save this a turn? Yeah, the, the tough part here is Anderson's hand is Anticipate and Fiery Temper. Yes. So he has the ability to draw another card with Jorian if he'd like. Yes. But his life is going to take quite a hit here. Yeah, it's precarious. Yeah. And he's looking to flip that thing in the ice as soon as possible. Yeah, he wants to make him pick everything up. Yeah. That's so important at this stage. And I think, I think Jorian's going to hang out for another turn. Yeah, he's going to take eight ingest. Exiling that land, not going to the graveyard, which will matter, I think, in other situations, but not this one. Sure. And and that Drown Your Temple that Todd had discarded early in this game hasn't come into play yet. Mike said enough pressure to just be on him the whole game. Here's Anticipate. Remove an Ice Counter. Take a look at the top couple. Magmatic Insight's probably the best if he can find it. Fiery Temper, not great uh, right now. Yeah, that's an awkward one because of his mana constraints. Mm -hmm. He's going to take the Temper. Keep in mind, he has not played a land yet this turn, and he's certainly going to get to draw another card because of Jorien. Yes. So what comes next? Mountain's going to be the land for Todd. Well, he, He's got to cast one of these Fiery Tempers here. Ooh, he is not. Oof. Huh. I wonder what the plan is. I feel like I'm missing something. Me too. Um, it, it's possible Todd thinks it's more effective if he bluffs the card here. Okay. You know, may, maybe he gets his opponent to make a, a scared attack. Okay. I'm going to take one. I think we have a Declaration of Stone on the way. Yep, he's going to cast that on Thing in the Ice. All right, Anderson. Fiery Temper. Oh. Oh, oh. we did miss oh, it. he's too smart. Okay. We, we did miss yeah, it. Yeah, we missed it. All right. This makes him discard. And now, oh, man, we are. This is release week. This it, is when you miss things on the board. This is awesome. So actually, Fire Temper was an awesome draw. Yes. So Todd is a little bit better at magic than we are. A touch. Just yeah. a touch. Just a touch. So now that's going to transform, trigger, 
bounce all the things, get my Jorien back, which means he might be able to use that to draw another card. And now Declaration Stone will resolve. Because it's still targeting the same thing. Yep. Keep in mind, because of what happened with the old Planeswalkers from Magic Origins, like Jace leaves play and then comes back as a new Planeswalker. Yep. When Thing of the Ice transforms, it's still in play, just transforms into Awoken, to Awoken Horror. So you're still targeting the same thing. So that th this was really fun. It was neat seeing Todd see that play. Yeah. But he's probably still just going to lose this game. I think he's still in some trouble. <laughs> yeah. Now he's going to play Jorien again. And now here's another copy thing. Okay, in the ice. he drew so another thing in the ice. That was a good draw. So card. he draws a card. Goggles is the kind of card that can catch you up. There's a Jace. All right. Okay. This might be manageable. Now on Lanigan's side, we know he's got another vile aggregate, that reality smasher still. He'll draw a card for the turn. It's a mountain. That one doesn't play a huge role in things as he plays it. Anderson down to two. Might going to survey things a little bit here. Yeah, his best play is probably just get the Reality Smasher back on the board and attack with it. But he's going to take a look at things and see if there's a better line of play in there. There's Reality Smasher. Here come the beatdowns. Vile Aggregate, a two-power creature right now. So we'll see how Anderson wants to block. Now, yeah, and both of those creatures have Trample. So Todd has to be very careful. Yep. Looks like Thing of the Ice is going to jump in front of Reality Smasher. And then Jorian's going to go in front of Vile Aggregate. The thought process here is, I don't think I'm going to die. Well, and he's going to need a lot of cards to get back into this game. And Jace is the way to do that. Sure. Trample over for one. Anderson's going to fall down to one. Now he'll untap. Can he come all the way back from one life? That's what we're going to find out as he takes a draw step. It was a mountain. And Jace is going to go active. Time to draw and discard. Drown Yard Temple is the easy discard. Transformation complete here into the Talapath Unbound. Keep in mind, Anderson has not played a spell yet this turn for Jorien, though he's got some things to choose from in the graveyard. It's going to go down to two. And he's going to start with Anticipate, looking for a little bit of help. Time to draw, or excuse me, take a look at the top three. It's a Shivan Reef, a Memetic Insight, and a Mountain. He'll take Insight. I believe he's on the hunt for Lightning Axe. Sure. Well, Goggles, draw from Jorien. Fall of the Titan was the draw. Good one, but his mana is already all tied up. Mm-hmm. See how he wants to do this now. Does he want to insight with a land or with the goggles? I think he's playing for the best possible scenario, where you leave the goggles up. I think he's just got to look at two. I, I think he's got to look he, as many okay, cards as possible. He, yeah, he's going to see as many cards as possible. The, the greedy play is, you know, hope that you draw the lightning axe in the top two. Okay. And then you get to fork it. Kill, kill with the all goggles. The yeah. Sure. So now. Is he just pat he's oh lightning accident instant. He, he, yeah. Never mind. Okay. Yep, yep. Alright, pass the turn back. He's hanging on. Yeah, this would be a pretty spectacular <laughs> win if, if Todd was able to pull this out. What comes next here for Mike? Might just be a vile, vile aggregate pre-combat to make the other one a little bit larger. Yeah, a little more power. Now Jorien is a three toughness creature, if memory serves. Two, three for three. Oh, Needle Spires. Okay. Okay. He, yeah. Yep. He, he saw. So the question was, is, is he willing to activate Needle Spires to try to kill me? If the answer is yes, I lose. If he plays Vile Aggregate pre-combat to make his other Vile Aggregate a little bit larger, then I get to play another turn. Yep. So Mike thought things through there because he almost cast that Vile Aggregate. Y yes. But he thought things through, realized Needle Spires is out there on the battlefield, and Anderson immediately concedes the game as he saw that line of play. So Mike landed again with Fred Eldrazi and Todd Anderson, blue-red control, going to game number three. And probably one, one more turn for Todd. Probably would have been enough. He put oh, the goggles out there. Yeah, he had a whole new hand. Yep. He had the goggles. So we take a look at the sideboard jet again. Anderson going to be on the play here. And what you basically predicted, I think, happened here, because we saw a negate in Todd's hand mm -hmm. at the end of the game along with the Void Chatter. So yep. he's going to board in those cheap counter magic spells, and Mike's going to board in uh, more removal to take care of Jason Jorian. Yes. So not too much of a surprise there. Uh, game three going to be underway here in just a moment. Who do you think this favors? 
you know, Todd's going to be on the game, uh, on the play this game, which I, I think is going to be a pretty big edge. And I, I think it's a big advantage playing a deck where your opponent doesn't know all of the cards that are going to come at you. So I'll pick Todd. Todd has the advantage here. And I've got to think that Todd is, no offense to Mike, but just the better Magic player in this match. I think so. Now, as these players shuffle and present, we'll go over two things very quickly here. Number one is the Sovereign Mile Driver player packages and things that we have for our Creature Collection, so you can get playmat sleeves and bundles of this game night favorite at starcitygames.com slash Creature Collection. You can also do the same with Los Tigre, the Tiger. The little cubs. Yeah, they are adorable. Playmat sleeves and player bundles available for both of those, along with many other things. Go to starcitygames.com slash creature collection for more information. Pick yours up today as we get ready here for game number three between Anderson and Lanigan. This has been a fun one to watch, but truth be told, I think they're all going to be fun this weekend. There's a lot of decks in this format. Yes, there are. There's a lot of good cards, and it's really great seeing what people do with them. Yeah, I, I like this blue-red deck. It's not the kind of deck that I would probably play, but this is so in Todd's wheelhouse. Yes. He loves these blue decks that, in Jace is obviously very powerful, decks that have a lot of velocity, you see a lot of cards, they have a lot of decisions, but they also just have a lot of answers. Yes. And some small synergies, you know, like the, like the Drown Yard Temple with Jace. Yes. Stuff like that. Well, it, it, the, the power level is very high, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the big question I think that this deck answers, and as Todd is going to play presumably 15 rounds of Magic this weekend, or at least hopefully he does, is, is Thing in the Ice good? Yep. Because this is the deck, I think, that is maximized to flip that card with regularity, and we'll find out if the 0-4 into a 7-8 bounce all your stuff and attack and all that stuff, if that's good or not. Because I don't think that any deck does it better than this one. Yeah. Well, there is a Shiv and Reef and a passing of the turn. Mike is going to activate his Evolving Wilds, search up a basic land here. And he could get that waste if he wanted to. He's just going to go with the planes, however. No waste for him. What a waste. Okay. It's low, <sighs> low hanging fruit. Yep, it's just easy. It sure is. And you just took it. I, uh, I'm not too proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Neil Spires pass the turn back. Anderson's going to play an anticipate. He'll take one to cast it from the Shiver Reef down to 19. A thing of the ice magnetic inside and a fall of the Titan are the cards that he's looking at. He's made his selection, so he'll untap, take his third turn. And he will start with magnetic insight, discarding a Drown Yard Temple. Value, as yep. they say. A Wandering Fumarole might be the land, and it is the land, and now he'll pass the turn back. Back over to Mike Lanigan we go for his third turn. He'll play a mountain. Let's see if he can get to the board finally, though. And, and this is a relatively slow start for both players, so it's got to favor Todd in a big way. And he's not under a ton of pressure. Looks like he just peeled the goggles that he'll be able to play on turn five. Darn. He's just going to pass the turn back for right now. Kozilek's return at the ready, by the by. Four mana, Thought Knot's here. That's a good one. Yes, it is. Void Shatter is also pretty good. That's going to counter that. It's going to exile that Thought Knot's here. And now Vile Aggregate's going to come across for one. One of the things that Mike's deck can't do, however, is deal with the goggles once it's on the battlefield. I do not believe he has a clean answer. I guess he has Angelic Purge in the sideboard. Yeah, we, we saw that come in. Okay. Now would be a good time to have it. There's Foundry of the Council, and now here's Reality Smasher. It's an attack for seven. Yeah, it's possible... You know, just just big threat after big threat it, it is as good as answering that goggles with a removal spell. Yeah. Well, oh, Anderson does have the ability to play a lightning axe right now, and I think he might, and he will. So it's going to get copied. There are your targets, two of them. He's going to have to discard a card. And then he's going to have to discard another card. Uh, I We'll have to check, actually, if he has to discard one or two. Yeah, I think he has to discard two, right? Because alternate cast. Yeah, to one, play one it, for the cost of the axe. And then one from the smasher. And one for the smasher trigger. Or actually, the copy. Nope, because the copy doesn't make you discard. Okay. So you target. So the copy. Okay, so you, you put the first one on the Viler aggregate. Yep. And then you put the copy. See, it's not the way he's lined this up. Yeah, we'll have to see exactly if it's one card or two cards. No, that's what they're asking right now. Yep. And we can see just how complicated magic can get just so quick. Yeah. Now, it's funny because I'm sure that Todd actually knows how the card works. 
So that's that, yeah, that's interesting because I don't know. We'll have to take a look, like, take a look at Reality Smasher too. It's actually pretty tough to say on what's supposed to happen here or not. I'm not entirely sure. That's why we have judges. Yep. And we are not those. So Jennifer Deary is stepping into the situation and helping out. Now Reality Smasher, whenever Reality Smasher becomes a target of a spell an opponent controls, now it's a copy of a spell. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the judges will tell us. Yeah, they will let us know, that's for sure. In the meantime, we can discuss this deck and what's going on with it. And you see uh, Jennifer Deary actually going to the phone and the Oracle app yes. to make sure that she knows exactly how it works. So we'll come back to the booth here very quickly because you don't want to see their faces. <laughs> <laughs> they want to see ours. So we will let that happen. Cedric Phillips, Greg Kremples here in the booth watching Todd Anderson and Mike Lanigan do battle. Uh, second time we've watched Red, White, Old Drazi this weekend. Yeah. Um, your thoughts on it, even though it's only two matches? Uh, I like the deck. It's very consistent. Okay. And these Eldrazi are still very powerful. Okay. We see Thought Nasir every time we come down. It, it, it's a threat immediately, followed by Reality Smasher. That's obviously even better threat of immediately, course. followed by Chandra. Like, it's a good curve. Yeah. And, I mean, it has to be. The the question is, uh, the I think the appropriate lands. You mentioned Westville Abbey, but it, it's weird, right? Where that card's obviously very good, mm -hmm. and it's basically a free roll in the deck. But is there maybe a better colorless land to play in that slot? Don't know. Yeah. Maybe the answer is yes, maybe not. Uh, obviously, more matches need to be played to be able to figure that sort of thing out. But yeah, and it's easy to get caught up in that hype early. Yeah. When, when all of the writers start talking about how what, how good Westville Abbey has been, mm -hmm. you don't want to be the person left behind. So even if your testing shows, eh, this card wasn't the best option, you might be inclined to play it just because you don't want to be the dummy who doesn't make top eight yeah. without it. Yeah, without it in your deck. Well, two or three other people make top eight with it in the yeah. deck, yeah. Looks like Wandering Fumeral is going to come across. Now, we will get you an update on what the ruling was there, if he had to discard another card or not, because that was a little bit complicated. But in the meantime, Anderson did come across for a healthy chunk of damage there with his creature land. And now we head back to land again. And he did have to discard additional card for the Smasher, and now here is a, another Reality Smasher coming into the red zone. So, Anderson will draw a copy of Lightning Axe. Let's go along with a Fiery Temper and a Fall of the Titan. A little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. But how does he navigate here? That's the question. Yeah, yeah. I, I think with the cards in his hand and the way the board is set up, he's going to play as conservatively as possible. Um, he'll probably pass the turn and hope that Mike deploys another threat before his attack step. And then he'll double down with Lightning Axe doubled up through the goggles discarding a fiery temper to deal some more damage. The thing is, if I'm Mike in this spot, and you know, we're working, neither player is working with perfect information, mm -hmm. but you know that your opponent has lightning axe in their deck, uh, I don't know if I want to play another third. Yeah, oh yeah. I think one smasher is good enough. I've got a Westville Abbey that can make a, make a creature. I've got a Foundry of the Councils that I'm kind of threatening right now. I'm not sure I need to play another threat. Well, and we saw Mike in the second game see the right play. Yeah. You know, he thought about playing the vile aggregate pre-combat, and he's like, no, let's just fire up our creature land, attack with everything, and see if that's lethal. And now he's reaching for something here pre-combat. It's a Thopter Engineer. And this is actually, it, it lines up very well for Todd. <laughs> yes, it does. With Fire Temper being in the, in the equation. Yep. It he, lines up great. He's going to get to use all of his resources very effectively this yep. turn. So there's a Thopter. And what's this follow-up? Hanger Backwalker. Huh. Okay. Now that's an artifact, so it gets haste. Yeah, I expect that haste to be turned off. <laughs> you know, Todd's going to kill a couple of creatures here, and the, yep. the engineer won't, won't be on the board. Easy, yeah. easy, yeah. easy. Just a moment. Now he's actually going to let everything attack, so... Hmm. How does he want to defend here? Well, and with Fall of the Titan in his hand with the goggles, it's very possible he wants to kill the walker this turn. Okay. And then next turn he can use Fall of the Titan doubled up to kill a bunch take of Take care of the riffraff. Okay. But then he's still gotta he's still gotta be concerned with those preacher lands that are hanging out. Yep. Westville Abbey, Needle Spiders, and Foundry of the Council. Yep, it's not gonna be easy. 
Huh. What to do, what to do if you're Todd Anderson. Mike Lanigan, well, his plays are pretty straightforward. Give you the beatdowns, just try to kill you. And, and these Eldrazi decks take advantage of the, the lands that create creature effects much better than some of the other decks because Absolutely. a lot of their threats are so potent that you're tapping out on your own turn to take care of them. Mm -hmm. And then they've got more gas in the tank in reserve. Let's see, this is unfamiliar territory here for Anderson. He's typically so much more sure of himself with the decision making, but this is what happens when you work your way into a new format. Everybody's a little unsure of the decisions they need to be making. Because right now he's considering what I can do with the goggles, how my next turn's going to play out depending on what I want to, what I draw, how I'm going to use Wandering Fumarole right now. Yep. Yeah, if he wants to, he can activate the Fumarole. Still have the goggles and the Fumarole as mana sources, so he can cast the Axe and cast the Madness yeah, the off fiery of the Fiery Temper. temper. Yep. But you can see just just trying to get that sentence out of my mouth is difficult. <laughs> it's, it, it's that complicated. Yeah. I mean, he's going to have to make a play soon here. Now he's found the line that he wants. All right, so Lightning Axe. Oh, we're going upstairs. Fiery Temper you twice. Hmm. Okay, and he's got a land to rebuy out of the graveyard. But he Which I guess he didn't. He doesn't see right now. Okay. Yeah, because he should have. I think he's got a Draenor Temple down there. Huh. Okay, so now he's just drawn Tormenting Voice. But if he wants to cast it, he has to discard Goggles. If, Did he, uh, if he brings a land back, was it... Maybe Mike was dead, I'm not sure. Because it, it doesn't have Surge, it's just normalized then. Correct. I, I believe he could have only cast it for three. Okay. Through the Goggles at six? Yes. Okay. Now he's bringing that... Forward. Okay, so Tormenting Voice, discard Fall of the Titan. Draw four. Magmatic Insight, Jace, Island. Here's Insight. If he does have a Drown Yard Temple in his graveyard, that was a pretty big miss. Anticipate. And a Jorien. Not sure there's an avenue here. He hasn't played a land yet. Correct. Yeah, yeah, I, I think... Okay, thing in, the, thing in the Ice and Jace pass the turn back. I think I, if, Go I, ahead. I, I guess, Todd, lo looking at Mike's side of the board, like you said, he, he still has Westfell Abbey and Foundry of the Council, and I, I guess Todd's thinking was, if I use all of my cards here, to try to sweep up most of these creatures, and he still has cards in his hand, and he still has these creature lands on the board. My better play might to be might be to play to drawing one or two particular cards to just win the game next turn. Sure. This is going to put Anderson down to one after trample and damage is all said and done. Well, we're going to find out how explosive this deck can be right now. I think. Yeah, there's a hanger back walker for one pass the turn back. <laughs> yep. Mike just shrugged his shoulders, taps, his, taps out, and now I don't know if this deck can do it. Mountain's certainly not going to do it. Yeah, and that's going to do it. Mike Lanigan's going to win this match over Todd Anderson, two games to one. Red, white, Eldrazi will take care of blue, red control. And for this one, for Todd, I'm sure it's a match he's going to go back and watch because it felt like that third game, it felt like he had the tools. The question is, did he use the tools correctly? Lightning Axe, targeting Thopter Engineer. After the creatures get to attack, it, it, it looks like a weird line of play.